All right, here we go. And there he is, Fred Dodson. Welcome to the Subconscious Mind Mastery Podcast. I'm Thomas Miller, and we are joined again by Fred Dodson. And Fred, you know, I get so many great comments when you're on this podcast. So you've got the it factor going, the sizzling in your fingers that we're going to talk about today. Welcome back. Thank you, Thomas. I'm happy to be on Subconscious Mind Mastery. Not only that, but we're also on YouTube on the Subconscious Mind Mastery channel and the Frederick Dodson channel or wherever you put it, Rumble or wherever this ends up. But it's uh, we're capturing the video as well. So if you'd like to I, I gotta, see it. I'll censor myself so that I can put it on YouTube. Oh, OK. All right. Good. Well, well, I don't think with electromagnetic self that we have too much to worry about, but you never know. So you we'll never see. know. But anyway, <laughs> these, look on our channels are, and you'll find it. Yeah. yeah. These, <laughs> these YouTube this. two people are pretty serious. You know, they take stuff very oh, yeah. seriously. They take oh, yeah. Themselves Absolutely. Right. A lot of people like to kind of know uh, about like the process of turning these books into audio. And uh, let me just get back here. Ah, here's a good page. So I read these off of uh, an electronic device. This is this is a what you call it iPad, but I actually use a Kindle upstairs and uh, narrate these books. And we have a new one called the Electromagnetic Self. Now, the question as I was reading through this that was in my mind. So I'm glad we get to do this is you're known as the reality creation guy, the energy guy, levels of energy, which I guess you announced on your Twitter page. I don't guess. I know I saw the post that you're rewriting levels of energy even, correct? I'm currently rewriting parts of levels of energy that I'm not entirely happy with that are not high enough energy, um, especially the things that only pertain to the time 2008 or nine, which is when I wrote it. You know, in 100 years, nobody's going to care. So I'm trying to turn the book into something that is more timeless and people can relate to in 100 years, 200 years, 500 years. Mm. Yeah, it's as timeless as scripture. I mean, it really, truly is. I also so want to get, get rid of a few errors <laughs> before I die. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. So... um you're known for that book. You're known for parallel universes of self. Those are your signature markers. This is the book is entitled "The Electronic or the Electromagnetic Self," and I'm curious what the difference is between the electromagnetic self and the energetic self. None. Oh, none. No, I just meant to. Because I've been hearing people discern between, okay, this is science and that's spirituality. And I intended to get rid of that separation, that border. And that's why I wrote this book. There is uh, science using spiritual concepts and repackaging them as science. That's what one of the chapters of the book says. It says, science is repackaged spirituality. And in that beautiful chapter, one of my favorite of all time, <laughs> others don't agree, but that's the way it often is, you know, one of my favorite <laughs> chapters of all time, I, I give examples of how the chakra system, for example, is now called the endocrine system in science, or sympathetic magic, voodoo, is now called quantum entanglement. So what so-called science did is it took all these concepts and said, oh, all that's a superstition. It stole them and says, okay, this is the way reality actually works. And then if you look deeply, you realize it's the exactly same thing, just repackaged. It's kind of a, a, a putting things into a different perspective book. It's um, realizing that you are electricity, you are electromagnetic, Literally, literally, not sp just spiritually. That's the misconception. When I say you are energy, I'm not talking about some vague spiritual thing you can't touch. It's a 
specific reality. It's measurable electricity that you are. I did a little sample of this last night, told our some podcast listeners, uh, we get together on uh, our YouTube channel, actually, on Sunday nights, a little thing that's called Level Up. And I told them about this in the book. And we did the little exercise that you have in there where you can literally form energy with your hands into a ball. You can feel it, right? Sure. If you you can put you, if you yeah, go like this for a there. while, yeah. If you go like this for a while, you'll eventually feel the warmth in between your hands. I mean, some people add visualization. You don't even have to do that. It's enough. You just hold it like this for a while, and you feel that from your hands. Something is emanating, some type of radi radiance, warmth. It's, it's obvious, okay? You also did it with this part of the palm. Put those together, same thing. You know, people last night were saying that, some were saying that their hands were tingling when they put them together in the ball-type shape or when they pressed their palms closer together. Um, but what, what struck me is that when you do that, you're talking about a subtle feeling versus if somebody threw you a volleyball, for example, and you had to catch it, all of a sudden now you have a physical object, right? You have something in the physical plane versus yeah. that subtle spiritual energetic ball, still yeah. a ball. Isn't that the difference between walking in the energy world and walking in the physical world? Densities, Thomas, yes. That, that's, mm. that's it, densities. When you have... Um, that's why people are addicted to sex, because when they have an orgasm, they feel it through their, out their entire body, through their spine. They feel the subtle energy as strong energy. And that gets them addicted to that because especially if they have no spiritual context and don't feel the subtle, they get attached to that. So this subtle electricity, that is a your electromagnetic self. That is one of your spiritual etheric layers. Now, I say we have several layers up to the uh, actual essence but that's, that's one of them. I say we have a physical self and a spiritual self, and in between the spiritual and the physical self, there's the electromagnetic self, kind of as a, as a bridge between the two. Something like that. I don't, I'm not saying I know everything about this yet, but that's, that's as far as I've come in my exploration. Wow, that's a... What a great surface scratch as well. So you talked about some of the ways that that electromagnetic self shows up. This was one, pressing the hands together. You also, I love that graphic where you had the energy coming off the tips of our fingers. You said, don't point a finger at people, right? Because yeah, you're, you're channeling, you're focusing energy in their direction. And yeah, you see in the old fairy tales, and even in, in modern fantasy movies, how wizards and witches, they always uh, use their fingers. Even hypnotists 100 years ago in comic books are always depicted as going like this. Why are hypnotists going like this? This knowledge is somehow lost because they're trying to influence and manipulate someone <laughs> using their energy. So that's why I don't like to point fingers. Nobody likes to point fingers. Nobody likes their finger pointed at, but it's more than just the finger. There's a array of energy coming out. It's me imposing on you, telling you what to do and to think. <laughs> you know, a couple of books back, you wrote, You Can Heal Anyone, and you've been incorporating this into some of your work, your articles, your events of laying on hands laying hands on. And I realized reading through that is you're talking about the energy coming off of the tips of the fingers. 
and there's an energy center here. And then you pointed out there's an energy center here. <clears throat> you lay that on somebody and you focus that energy on their body. Powerful. Very powerful. Yes. I still use it. I mean, that book, I'm so satisfied with that book because it's, uh, I've, I've received loads of feedback, Thomas. Uh, um, more than even levels of energy or parallel universes. So I'm hoping that you can heal anyone will someday, someday be just as popular as, as levels of energy. Because people keep talking about levels of energy, but this book is actually, it's just delicious. It's really good. Yeah, <laughs> very powerful. So instead of, mm -hmm, you go, mm -hmm. <laughs> And we can do it to ourselves. We can do it to others. We can do it remotely too, can't we? Yes, we can. We can. Consciousness is not limited to time and space. Thus, I can extend my awareness to somebody else and I can speak healing on them or I can speak manipulation on them. The same knowledge can be used for healing or for horrible uh, remote manipulation. What did you learn in researching this about our aura? The aura is like the current state of your electromagnetic self which, as I said, is the in-between between the spiritual essence, the higher self, and the physical self. It's like the, the eth I call it the etheric self as well. And the aura just shows the, the current state of that self, whether it's under attack or whether it's healthy. I learned that there's different ways to see the aura. I could have written a whole chapter on that, but I just don't want the, the books to get too thick. I could have uh, written about different ways of seeing the aura. Sometimes you see it from the corner of your eye, the peripheral soft eye. Sometimes you see it in very darkened rooms. Another way to, to see the aura is to be in a movie theater and project light onto people's backs to a white screen. That's how you can sometimes see it. There's different ways to see it with, with your bare eyes without the need for this special photography. But yeah, I'll, I'll say the aura is, is real. It's uh, You're seeing the electromagnetic self. I learned that, and this is another thing I didn't include in my books, but I posted about it on my social media. What you often see on my social media, on my Twitter account, is that I, I put stuff there that didn't fit into the book because I didn't want to make the book too, too big. So I'll just uh, add it to social media. I posted about the um, something called the Brocken Specter, which is the scientifically couched term for aura. It's a phenomenon that people experience on top of mountains uh, in certain atmospheric conditions in snow where they get this halo uh, around their body and a lot, lot more. Those are some of the things I learned about the aura. One of the impressive areas of manifestation of this, I guess, where it could show up is People, it's called the, I guess, the SLI or the SLI effect, where people walk by a street lamp and it flickers or it goes on or off or something like that. That's pretty wild. So I guess some people can extend that energy to either other items or beyond their three foot, four foot radius of the aura, whatever it is. Yeah, there's a chapter called the SLI effect something I'd never heard of before I researched the book. I mean, I'm like, is there still things I've never, ever heard of? What is this? And there's entire books and websites and uh, group meetings, uh, SLIers, anonymous meetups, uh, research papers on the SLI effect. And this is somebody walking 
That's street lamp interference, SLI. Somebody walking around and street lamps react. And this has never um, consciously happened to me, but sometimes I have wondered about things flickering when I'm near or gadgets acting up when I'm near or gadgets healing when I'm near, in fact. Oftentimes... Uh, people I know will have problems with their car or with a computer and then I'll show up and then it works. And people would joke, you know, can you please come here and, and fix this car? And then I just press on start and it starts. <laughs> so there's, yeah, we, we, we all, we, I think everybody's wondered, you know, the, the interaction between my electromagnetic field and other gadgets You've had stories in your books of a car being a little grumpy on a morning and you'll just lay your hands on the dash or some connection with it and give it a little bit of time and it'll, it'll come around. It'll come around. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I had, a, I had a battery sign on my car the other day and that's a bad sign, right? And then I just laid my hands on it and said, you're okay, buddy. And then next day, the battery sign was gone. I didn't even have to go to the repairs. So, yes, absolutely. You've known this. You, I'm sure this happens a lot. You walk into a crowded area and you can instantly feel the, the room, right? Whether it's a positive room, a negative room, a heavy room, a neutral room, et cetera. I guess the, the obvious thing is, well, two things. What does that do to our own energy when we enter a different environment? A, so if our energy was pretty good, we go into something that's not so good. And that could be a restaurant. It could be a concert. It could be any kind of a sporting event. Doesn't matter what it is, but there's just a heaviness there. What does that do to our own energy? Well, sometimes it affects us and sometimes it doesn't. Like the other day, uh, we were in such a good mood, laughing in the car, having a great time, lots of laughter. And then we uh, were walking around and we stepped into a TJ Maxx, stepped into this uh, huge clothing store. And after 15 minutes, I'm like, uh, let's leave, let's leave. And after that, there was no more laughing and no more joking around. Hmm. And then I, I, I commented on all that. I said, well, what happened to our, to our vibe? <laughs> we must have left it in TJ Maxx, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, TJ Maxx, so it's, okay. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah so, so if you're not aware of it, it can just zap you. I believe uh, much of society is an energy game, energy zapping game, and they they zapped us because I wasn't thinking about electromagnetic self or keeping my energy. Mm -hmm. I guess I could have gone in and said, okay, I'm going to maintain a high vibe here. But if it wasn't that high to begin with, it might have been easier to, to zap me. That's life, uh, Thomas. Life is a game of energy. I've been saying this a lot on podcasts and just in conversations that as a role model for me, you've been my mentor for quite a while now. And just as a role model, somebody that I've looked up to, somebody that I've emulated in just watching you. One of my observations is that you do as good of a job of maintaining as level of level of energy as possible, as level of consistency as possible. How do you do that? What are some of the things that you intentionally do to keep yourself at least in that upper range? I can tell you, that's a great question, by the way. Good job, Thomas. I can tell you one thing, and that's... I always make sure something's improving. So I'm going to assume that... Earth, planet Earth, tends toward entropy and decline. That means if I'm trying to keep my status quo and just stay the way I am, satisfied with who I am, I'm also going to decline with the 
normal entropy and decline of the earth. So I make sure that every day there's a small improvement. Like the other day, somebody installed a solar attic fan in my, in my attic. And that's going to save me, that solar energy is going to save me 30% of my electricity. And that's just uh, the improvement for Monday. Okay. And then Tuesday, um, I noticed that um, I could actually uh, share my, my YouTube meditations as downloads on my website. So I make that. That's another small improvement. And then the next day, I notice that um, I've been snacking a lot on peanut butter. I love peanut butter. Just right out of the jar okay now you know something about me i'm like it's, it's a weird habit okay it's not a not a good thing to be eating out of a jar uh, i'm gonna stop that so that's another slide yes fred dotson ate peanut butter right out of a jar and it's a habit i picked up about month one month ago and i don't know how i picked that up and i just started doing that almost every day i'm like well, what is this okay enough of this stop anything that becomes an addiction or a habit, I, I put a stop to because as I teach, any compulsion is a sign of low consciousness. You don't want any any compulsion in your life, any addiction at all. So that's another improvement. And in this way, I improve something every single day. And if I go a day without improvement, I start to get restless. I've planted that belief into me that it, it, it's always has to go upwards, always upwards. And that's why I can maintain a certain level. So I'm not resting on anything and I'm not assuming that I'm successful. Never assume that you've made it. Because if you assume you've made it, you stop expanding. The universe is always expanding. And you say, okay, I made it. There's no such thing as you're done. There's no such thing as you've made it. It's eternal eternal and infinite growth that is amazing and i'll tell you where i've seen this myself i used to shoot a television show that was um we covered professional fishing tournaments now they've become a really big deal back then it was kind of you know its own little niche but i would see this over and over and you see it in golf too i'm thinking of tiger woods that these guys would come up out of the shoots. They were young, aggressive. They were good. You knew they were going to be at the top of the game in a few years. They would get there. And now the money's coming in. The recognition is there. They're getting the interviews. They're being, you know, we're putting them on television and the sponsors want to meet with them. And now all of a sudden it's dinner meetings instead of going back and getting ready for the next day. And oh, then yeah. you get sloppy. Oh, and yeah. And then you, your game falls apart. You see it in tennis too. Same. I mean, any of those analogies where somebody they're still not at the top of their game, but they hit a ceiling because they're so distracted. Yes. And, and they're also praised too early and celebrated too early. Celebrating too early is a, is a major mistake, you know, <laughs> then they suddenly get fat and they're no longer, they're distracted and they're no longer focused on their game on what made them successful in the first place. Yes, that's it. That's actually, that is it right there. Thank you for, for bringing that up. You, well, you and I'm just, I'm sure that you've coached a lot of people that are in that position. Absolutely. Because uh, every successful person that starts struggling, starts struggling for the same reason. Because they start resting on what they already know. Instead of assuming, I don't know anything and I have yet to learn. I don't know anything is beautiful. It's, it's, um, <laughs> if you don't know anything, you're constantly learning something new. You know? Yeah. What did you and your wife do to get your vibe back after you re recognized that it was left in the store? <laughs> Nothing. We just, um, it was late. We just went home. And then after waking up in the morning, the, the vibe is right back there. Mm. That's, that's the good thing about sleep. You reset. It's a great reset. Maybe if I mention great reset, YouTube will leave my video up. Don't say that word. <laughs> He's just talking about taking a nap, guys. Come on, leave it alone. So, 
<laughs> what Waking up in the morning is the great reset. <laughs> there you go. That's it. That, right. An energetic reset. What do you think happens energetically or electric, electronic, electromagnetically during sleep? Did you get anything on that as you were researching? Yeah, I guess uh, not while I was researching. I, I, this is known uh, for a long time, and you know it too. During sleep, your self leaves the body. If it didn't, it would be one boring, boring night. Right? Staring at the ceiling, man. <laughs> nobody, nobody stays in their body. We go up, we recharge, come back down. That's why most people feel refreshed. Besides forming energy balls with our hands, which is really cool, and the group that I did this with last night, they loved it. They were like, oh, my gosh, this is that. And a lot of them had done it before. Of course, Reiki itself is a way of moving energy around with your hands. Ray. Blowing out. I'm sorry. Ray. Ray. Key. The energy of God. Ray. Right? Key. Mm -hmm. Key yeah. is energy and Ray is a ray. See, I listen when I read these books. <laughs> that comes from the linguistics books. So besides that and showing off around street lights, if you can, and maybe calming a room down if you walk in where you could extend your elect electromagnetic self into the room and maybe affect the vibration. What are some other... What, so, so like with levels of energy, there's such a contrast between... 100s level states, anger, for example. I don't want to be angry. Fear, I don't want to fear. Versus the contrast of the higher states, love, joy, creativity, playfulness, laughter. I want to live like that. That's an easy like choice of what are some things that we can do to exercise and grow and raise the vibe of our electromagnetic body? our electromagnetic self. Well, read the book because um, awareness of it helps you. Just being aware of it actually is, is, is almost enough to protect it and nurture it. You know, I, I say so many things in that book from cold showers uh, that wake you up to turning off Wi-Fi at night to the other day, this waitress came really close to me and I go like, mm-hmm, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Protecting your, your field, you know, because I didn't like her vibe. Standing here like, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, to, you know, I'm, I'm choosy who I let get close to me. Um, I, I've, I always have been, even as a teenager, I didn't sleep with anyone. I'm very choosy because of their their field, who they are. Because if I'm going to have sex with them, I have to take all of that in, that's stored in their aura. And <laughs> you get the point, you know. And with most people, you just don't want that. You just don't want it. So choosy about, again, choosy about what you do. Choosy about what you put attention on. Choosy about who you spend time with choosy about where you go it's the same as uh same answer as always it's reality creation in action which is pivoting to things you prefer and never ending improvement i mean there's so much if you want to know the answer to that question get the book all right and one other thing that's kind of in the present, at least if you're watching this in 2023, is the Levels of Energy seminar event that's coming up over the Memorial Day weekend in the United States, May 26th, 27th, 28th. I'm going to be joining you there. Talking so about... Will I. <laughs> yes, we hope you'll show up. Well, and that's the, that was what I was going to ask you is if people are going to register and come and everybody wants to obviously express their love for you, their appreciation for the books and the work and the podcasts and the music and everything that you've done to contribute to our lives. But in also respect of that energy, how do you prefer that people attempt to approach you? And I'm just saying like from the difference of 
a hug or an embrace, which brings it right into your field, and then you have to deliver a seminar versus perhaps, you know, kind of what became popular over COVID, an elbow bump or just a wave across the room. What do you prefer? Well, the, the people who show up in, in these kinds of seminars um, are usually good vibe. So mm -hmm. hugs and handshakes are not a problem. S sorry to say so, okay? That's, it's a fact. It's, it's a fact. Uh, it, I know a lot of coaches who don't even want that, you know. I, I know this one coach, he's like, oh, rather not handshake. Mm -mm. <laughs> so they're very particular. But, you know, uh, my energy, even if my energy is sapped during the seminar, I'll regenerate within a day. It takes mm -hmm. one day to regenerate. That's fine. It's not a problem. And, you know, All if right. I go to, the, go, go to the mall or something, it takes a couple of hours to regenerate if I'm zapped there. So we're not in that bad of a condition that we have to avoid people all the time. I hope we're not in that kind of condition. It's also um, meeting others is not only energy zapping. Meeting others is also energy providing because in the interaction between people, much more energy can come up. That's why we do seminars. So I don't I want people to only see others only in terms of zapping. There's a lot to be gained by meeting others. And if you isolate yourself, you're not going to, you're missing out on a lot of energy. The energy zapping comes in with uh, people who are in, in, in a very dire, very negative state, you know, people who are sad or grieving, or hateful, or whatnot, and just go like, hmm, <laughs> I don't need that right now. But in general, it's um, life-affirming and, and life-giving to have social contact, not social distancing, to have hugs, to have handshakes, just to make that you know, clear. I'm just feeling this. Uh, so when we attend, especially those of you who are listening or watching who are going to be there, Put together what Fred just mentioned in this podcast of intending to bring high energy into the room, intending to know nothing and come in as a complete learner and take your own personal space up higher and then bring that in to share with everybody else. Man, you'll have to we'll have to be calling maintenance to get us off the ceiling. <laughs> it's like we'll all be floating will be levitating. Yes, that's that's actually, that's true. Um, this seminar is going to make everybody much lighter. That's the that's the intention. Everybody who's, then, who's there is going to go out lighter. Because we, we have this, you know, from life, from daily life, we have a general heaviness and expectation of heaviness. And there's going to be none of that. It's just going to be lighter so that the lightness lasts for a while. And if it goes away, you know how to get it back. You know how to recover more quickly. And if we, the audience, are intentionally bringing that highest vibe of our own to the room, then you can feed off of that and it will just perpetuate and be even better. That's great. All right, we will point people to realitycreation.org for all of the resources on this. You can get links to the book, and you can get links to the event if you'd like to participate, along with a myriad of other materials on the website. Fred, thanks for being with us today. Thank you for doing this podcast, Thomas. And we always say at the end, enjoy the journey. Thanks for being mm -hmm. with us.